that the nine people have been released? No. I think you can use the number of 117. So this is not correct for 108? But from what we have said, yes, but I think I, what I would ask my colleagues is just to clarify on this one. But these were the numbers that we released on Saturday. You're right in 117. Maybe before you actually leave, we can clarify them. Yeah. But that would be useful for all yeah, of us. Yeah, for sure. No, 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 we'll absolutely. do that. Yeah. We'll do that. Yeah. John Ackley, from the Financial Times. The gun shop wounds, they mostly rubber bullets, live ammunition. What sort of bullets are we talking about? Now that one is I'm not I'm not able to describe that because the next question is then do you know who did it and I would also probably say no I don't know but these are gunshot wounds that we treated at the end of the day so I wouldn't want to go into the details because one I'm not expert on that and number two it's not my business my business is to help them to get to hospital. Uh, yes. I will give you a you be able to maybe divide it say uh, how many of the injury were gunshots and in which areas do you do you them? Yeah. Did we have those numbers? Huh? We had the numbers, the differences? Yeah, On the gunshot wounds, did we have the numbers? Where, where is Susan? We are checking. Okay, so we'll check that. Uh, and then you also say you have estimate numbers of how many people might have died. Would you be able to also give us <laughs> estimate? So, I mean, there are figures out there, and I don't want to add more figures, okay, to be fair. But if you want me to say of what we, our tracing team, has checked and found out, we have nine in Nairobi and eight in Kisumu. But don't ask me more about them, because the details is nothing on my business. But again, there could be more out there. So again, I'm just saying what we now know that are in mortuary, those are the numbers that are there. And you can go to Nairobi mortuary, city mortuary, and you can go to uh, uh, the provincial hospital in Kitsumu. Okay, and then maybe last question. I see Nairobi has 55. Would it be possible to say which area, I'm assuming it's Ella Kibera, um, or Kalavari, yeah. or whatever it is? Can you, can you tell us where? It should be largely Kibera and Mazare, but that information, again, you can be given the breakdown if you want. Well, if there's no, any other question then, we can say good afternoon to all of you. Yeah. This will also be dangerous, but that is a danger that no one side must ever break. But uh, then we have to be clear what are the other numbers. Yes, Do you the know? numbers we will put in the press release which you are sending. In Gapis are easy to pay. Nairobi alone is 129. Okay. So I, I think, Jill, to go back to your question, <laughs> the clarification I've been given, uh, and I can tell Noel, our PR to, uh, a colleague, to do. These are now what they would call their severe injuries, the 108. 108 severe. Yes. Could you define that? Okay, so this head injury, fractures, uh, tissues, broken bones, and all that. Mm -hmm. But they are all, almost how many more, you said? There are more, like Nairobi alone, we have 129 injuries. So some are very mild. So we are consolidating that information, and we are going to share it in a press release, which we'll share immediately after this. Mm -hmm. So there are many others who are uh, first aid re responded in first aid manner and they've been released. So the 117 I talked about on Saturday was the entire numbers that we had. Okay, so okay. for today's story we can say that 108 have been defined as severe injuries plus yes. many more other injuries. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Right. yes. Yes? Um, so I know that the National Disaster Operations Center has its own contingency plans for the response. Are you coordinating? Them or are we kind of separate? And then what's, the, what's your role as co-lead of all of the humanitarian hubs? Okay. So primarily there are a number of agencies in this country involved in, uh, in, in initial preparedness of this response. Um, this Kenya Red Cross has been in the hubs that have been set up countrywide. The work of Kenya Red Cross was to be basically uh, to be the secretariat. Uh, but on the other hand, the National Operation Center is run by the government, and uh, they would also collect information and coordinate um, uh, this information collection. As Kenya records, what I want to say, we are worldwide auxiliary to our government, but at the same time, we're independent, impartial, neutral, intermediary. 
So in terms of our response, it's our business. We respond without having to wait for anybody, whether UN or international NGOs or the government. We coordinate with them, but we do our work independently, just to be clear that we make the decision to respond as per the needs and as per requirement of our own legal mandate as an organization. So well, that is uh, a Red Cross Secretary General um, Abbas Gulet there giving the latest uh, figures on Kenyans who have been affected uh, by the post-election aftermath. And uh, so far, he says 117 uh, is the number of people who have been affected so far in the country. 108 of them are currently nursing very serious injuries, according to the Red Cross. Uh, some of them had injuries, uh, fractured bones, um, and all that. So, of course, we will be giving you more details about that address by a basket in a bit. Now, at least eight people are feared dead after a boat they were traveling in capsized in